A few weeks ago, a young mother that I know posted a photo on her Facebook page of her very messy house. Now, she has three children under the age of four, and this picture wasn't just a messy house, it was a disaster zone. There were toys and clothes and dishes and dogs and all kinds of things. And I found it interesting because she isn't one of those women who usually posts really personal messages or, or images. And I thought, wow, she must really be struggling today. Um, you know, her post received a lot of engagement. About 50 people liked the picture and over 60 people made comments. Here are a few of the reactions to her post. Makes us all feel more human. Oh, I love this picture so much. Makes me feel so much better. <laughs> Makes me feel normal. <laughs> now, why is it so relieving to find that other people struggle, just like we do? Are we selfish and awful human beings? Well, maybe we are. But I think there's something far more significant to this. We were made to struggle together. When my children were that young, well, first of all, I didn't have three of them, and I didn't ever have more than one child at a time. I had two only children. But I still remember those days of having a toddler, and I remember feeling really alone and isolated. I remember thinking that there weren't very many other people going through exactly what I was going through. And I, of course, now know that that is certainly not true. And that is why we need community. When we feel like we are alone in the world, when we get discouraged, we get frustrated, we get anxious, we go to bed and we stare up at the ceiling, we wonder where in the world we can find relief. That aloneness is devastating. According to the late John McCain, the worst part of the torture that he endured in Vietnam was solitary confinement. He once stated, it's an awful thing, solitary. It crushes your spirit and weakens your resistance more effectively than any other form of mistreatment. There's something entirely different about going through life's up and downs together. It strengthens us when we meet other people who are going through or have gone through whatever we are struggling with. And it's absolutely life-giving to be able to encourage other people who are going through something we've already experienced. A picture of a messy house on social media is a reminder to other parents with several small children that they are not alone in their messy house. There are lots of parents with messy lives and messy houses. And somehow seeing someone else's messy house gives us comfort. Technology is often praised for bringing us together, and to some degree this is true. We no longer have to wait until our high school reunion to find out how our former classmates are doing. We pull up Facebook on our phones and check it out. Most of the advances that of, we have had in the past century, though, have actually driven us further apart. The phonograph, let's, let's think way back, way back, not to this last decade. The phonograph made it possible that music could be listened to alone instead of at the symphony hall. Air conditioning and window screens made it more pleasing to be indoors than outside. Television and radio replaced, to a certain degree, the movie theater and the playhouse. And today, with live streaming, we never need to leave our homes, except to get some food. And we can get that delivered. <laughs> but the simple fact remains, we all need other People. We need community. We need to leave our houses and go out in public and interact with other people face to face. We need to share our stories in person. We need to share our struggles and celebrate our victories with someone else. We are hardwired 
to connect with other people. We are social beings. No matter what type of personality we have, we need other people. Emily Kimbrough has written, remember, we all struggle. Every one of us. That's why it's a comfort to go hand in hand. Other people socialize us. They teach us. They guide us. They lead us. They inspire us. They encourage us through word and through example. Likewise, we teach and we lead and we socialize and we guide and encourage other people. I recently read an article entitled The Power of Community, Six Reasons We Need Each Other. And I'm not going to talk about all six of them, but I want to focus on a couple of the reasons, according to this article written by Jen Walk, why we need each other. The first is most obvious. We need each other because we can all use some support. We all need someone to believe in us and to support us. When we're going through a tough time, we tend to isolate ourselves. <coughs> Bold and brave is the person who reaches out. Bold and brave is the person who seeks the company of someone else when things are tough. Far too often, when we need people the most, we just don't want to be around them. But if we can take that step, if we can call a friend, go to that social event, go to that group that meets that has that same hobby, go to that church service. We might be able to discover an injection of fortitude and hope that we couldn't create on our own. Hearing someone say our name out loud, being greeted with a hug or a smile, talking to someone even for just a few minutes before you start working out together gives you a feeling that you matter. Four powerful words that we can't create for ourselves. Four powerful words that must be uttered by someone else. You matter to me. You matter to me. Oh, my friends, how healing and comforting those words are, especially from the depths of isolation. We need a community of people who care about us, who believe in us. We need to matter to somebody. Another reason we need each other is collective wisdom. You know, if we're honest, we have to admit we really don't know everything all by ourselves, although I've met a few people. We can't really solve all of the problems that we are facing all by ourselves, no matter how brilliant we are. We need to talk through things with other people. We need to run some ideas past somebody else who isn't emotionally involved with the thing that we're struggling with. We need our community, our tribe, our family of choice to give us an additional thinking ability, some additional thinking power. We need to consult with the experts in our community, we don't know everything. We can't do this life all by ourselves. We need a community of people to, to help add to our wisdom. It's just that simple. And finally, there is a power of community that lies in new ideas. When we're working with a, within a community of like-minded people, the wisdom of crowds is considerably greater than any one person working alone. Our divergent worldviews and lenses mean that we all approach the exact same problem slightly differently. And we are made wiser from other people's points of view. In Proverbs, we find these words, you use steel to sharpen steel. And one friend sharpens another. When we are part of a community, we can guide and be guided. We can learn and teach. We can listen and explain. And we often need a community to help us with the spiritual matters of life, to help us discover our spiritual 
understanding. And so we need a community of people who will point us toward God and who will help us along our faith journey. I've said many times on Sunday mornings that I see and feel the presence and love of God best through other people. When I reach out to a community and I feel supported and accepted and loved for who I am, I know that is evidence of the love of God and acceptance that God has for me. I can see and feel God through the people who tell me by their actions and their words that I matter. So here's the problem. When we are hurting and we need our community the most, we often choose to distance ourselves from them. And when we separate from those who can help us, we are distancing ourselves from that tangible comfort and proof of love of God. And then we feel even more alone in the world, and then it's just a, it's a rat race, it's a vicious cycle. And the only way to break that cycle is to make sure that we are connected, connected to other people. We all need to connect to a community, to a group, to our biological family, to our family of choice, to our herd. Maybe it's the entry point faith community that gives us that connection. Maybe it's something else, maybe it's someplace else. But whatever it is, we need to make and keep a connection. I will tell you that it is beautiful to see all of you here today. Some of you I haven't seen for a long time. Some of you are regular attenders, some of you come every now and then, some of you I've never seen before in whatever category you're in, it doesn't matter. You are welcome here. You are welcome here now, you are welcome here any other time that you choose to walk back in here. You are important to us and we need you. We all need you here. We were made to struggle together. We are an imperfect, hopefully non-judgmental group. We are diverse in many ways. We sit on both sides of the aisle politically, and we never talk about politics here. <laughs> we are many ages and many walks of life, and I'm pretty sure there are a few messy houses among us. We know that God loves us, and we have each other's backs. We have undeniably become a family here, a family that loves and supports, a family that celebrates our unity and our differences. And we would love to see you back here again. Amen. Helen Keller has often said, alone we can do so little. Together we can do so much, and please know that this faith community is here always for you. Together we can indeed do so much. So let's continue our time this morning by sharing a meal. I think that is a wonderful way to end this day. Have a great Sunday, and go in peace. Amen.